This sound file contains the spoken word version of a Wikipedia article on Richard Branson. It is recorded by user S. Whistler, and the material was recorded on the 6th of May, 2012. Richard Branson, from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, at en.wikipedia.org. Richard Branson Sir Richard Charles Nicholas Branson, born the 18th of July 1950, is an English business magnate best known for his Virgin Group of more than 400 companies. His first business venture was a magazine called Student at the age of 16. In 1970, he set up an audio record mail-order business. In 1972, he opened a chain of record stores, Virgin Records, later known as Virgin Megastores. Branson's Virgin brand grew quickly during the 1980s, as he set up Virgin Atlantic Airways and expanded the Virgin Records music label. Branson is the fourth richest citizen of the United Kingdom, according to the Forbes 2011 list of billionaires, with an estimated net worth of $4.2 billion. Contents 1. Early life 2. Career 3. World record attempts 4. Television, film, and print. 5. Activism. 6. Business practices. 7. Honors and awards. 8. Personal life. Early life. Branson was born in Blackheath, London, the son and eldest child of a barrister, Edward James Branson, and Eve Huntley Branson. His grandfather, the Right Honourable Sir George Arthur Harwin Branson, was a judge of the High Court of Justice and a privy councillor. Branson was educated at Scattercliffe School, now Bishopsgate School, until the age of 13. He then attended Stowe School until the age of 16. Branson has dyslexia and had poor academic performance as a student, but later discovered his ability to connect with others. Career Record Business Branson started his record business from the crypt of a church where he ran The Student. Branson advertised popular records in The Student magazine, and it was an overnight success. Trading under the name Virgin, he sold records for considerably less than the high street outlets, especially the chain W. H. Smith. The name Virgin was suggested by one of Branson's early employees, because they were all new at business. At the time, many products were sold under restrictive marketing agreements that limited discounting, despite efforts, despite efforts in the 1950s and 1960s to limit so-called resale price maintenance. In effect, Branson became the series of changes that led to large-scale discounting of recorded music. Branson eventually started a record shop in Oxford Street in London. In 1971, Branson was questioned in connection with the selling of records in Virgin scores that had been declared export stock. The matter was never bought before a court, and Branson agreed to repay any unpaid tax and a fine. Branson's mother Eve remortgaged the family home to pay the settlement. Earning enough money from his record store, Branson, in 1972, launched the label Virgin Records with Nick Powell and bought a country estate, in which he installed a recording studio. He leased out studio time to fledgling artists, including multi-instrumentalist Mike Oldfield, whose debut album, Tubular Bells, 1973, was Virgin Records' first release and a chart-topping bestseller. Virgin signed such controversial bands as The Sex Pistols, which other companies were reluctant to sign. It also won praise for exposing the public to obscure avant-garde music at Faust and Cannes. Virgin Records also introduced Culture Club to the music world. In the early 1980s, Virgin purchased the gay nightclub Heaven. In 1991, in a consortium with David Frost, Richard Branson had made the unsuccessful bid for three ITV franchises under the CPV TV name. The early 1980s also saw his only attempt as a producer on the novelty record Bar Bar Black Sheep in association with Doug McLean and Grace MacDonald. The recording was a series of sheep barring along to a drum machine produced track and even made the charts at number 42 in 1982. In 1992, to keep his airline business afloat, Branson sold Virgin Label to EMI for £500 million. Branson says that he wept when the sale was completed, since the record business had been the birth of the Virgin Empire. 
he later formed V2 Records to re-enter the music business. Business Ventures Branson formed Virgin Atlantic Airways in 1984, launched Virgin Mobile in 1999, Virgin Blue in Australia in 2000. He was ninth in the Sunday Times Rich List 2006, worth just over three billion pounds. Branson wrote in his autobiography of the decision to start an airline. My interest in life comes from setting myself huge, apparently unachievable challenges and trying to rise above them. From the perspective of wanting to live life to the full, I felt that I had to attempt it. In 1993, Branson took what many saw as being one of his riskier business exploits by entering into the railway business. Virgin Trains won franchises for the former intercity west coast and cross-country sectors of British Rail. Virgin acquired European short-haul airline Euro-Belgian Airlines in 1996 and renamed it Virgin Express. In 2006, the airline was merged with SN Brussels Airlines, forming Brussels Airlines. It also started a national airline based in Nigeria, called Virgin Nigeria. Another airline, Virgin America, began flying out of San Francisco International Airport in August 2007. Branson has also developed a Virgin Cola brand and even a Virgin Vodka brand, which has not been a very successful enterprise. As a consequence of these lacklustre performances, the satirical British fortnightly magazine, Private Eye, has been critical of Branson and his companies. After the so-called campaign of dirty tricks, British Airways settled the case, giving £500,000 to Branson and a further £110,000 to his airline and had to pay legal fees of up to £3 million. Branson divided his compensation, the so-called BA bonus, among his staff. On the 25th of September 2004, Branson announced the signing of a deal under which a new space tourism company, Virgin Galactic, will license their technology behind Spaceship One, funded by Microsoft co-founder Paul Allen and designed by legendary American aeronautical engineer and visionary Bert Rutan, to take paying passengers into suborbital space. Virgin Galactic, wholly owned by Virgin Group, plans to make flights available to the public with tickets priced at $200,000 using scaled composites White Knight 2. Branson's next venture with the Virgin Group is Virgin Fuels, which is set to respond to global warming and exploit the recent spike in fuel costs by offering a revolutionary, cheaper fuel for automobiles and, in the near future, aircraft. Branson has been tagged as a transformational leader in the management lexicon, and with his maverick strategies and his stress on the Virgin Group as an organization driven on informality and information, one that is bottom-heavy rather than strangled by top management. On the 21st of September 2006, Branson pledged to invest the profits of Virgin Atlantic and Virgin Trains into research for environmentally friendly fuels. The investment is estimated to be worth $3 billion. On the 4th of July 2006, Branson sold his Virgin Mobile company to UK cable TV, broadband and telephone company NTL, NTL Telewest, for almost £1 billion. As part of the sale, the company pays a minimum of £8.5 million a year to use the Virgin name and Branson became the company's largest shareholder. The new company was launched with much fanfare and publicity on the 8th of February 2007 under the name Virgin Media. The decision to merge his Virgin Media company with NTL was in order to integrate both of the company's compatible parts of commerce. Branson used to own three quarters of Virgin Mobile, whereas now he owns 15% of the new Virgin Media company. In 2006, Branson formed Virgin Comics and Virgin Animation, an entertainment company focused on creating new stories and characters for a global audience. The company was founded with the author Deepak Chopra, filmmaker Shikhar Kapoor, and entrepreneurs Sharad Devarajan and Gotham Chopra. Branson also launched the Virgin Health Bank on the 1st of February 2007, offering parents-to-be the opportunity to store their baby's umbilical cord blood stem cells in private and public stem cell banks. In June 2006, a tip-off from Virgin Atlantic led US and UK competition authorities to investigate price-fixing attempts between Virgin Atlantic and British Airways. 
In 2007, British Airways was fined £271 million over the allegations. Virgin Atlantic was given immunity for tipping off the authorities and received no fine, a controversial decision the Office of Fair Trading defended as being in the public interest. On the 9th of February 2007, Branson announced the setting up of a new Global Science and Technology Prize, the Virgin Earth Challenge, in the belief that history has shown that prizes of this nature encourage technological advancements for the good of mankind. The Virgin Earth Challenge will award $25 million to the individual or group who are able to demonstrate a commercially viable design which will result in the net removal of anthropogenic, atmospheric greenhouse gases each year for at least 10 years without countervailing harmful effects. The removal must have long-term effects and contribute materially to the stability of Earth's climate. Branson also announced that he would be joined in the adjudication of the prize by a panel of five judges, all world authorities in their respective fields, Al Gore, Sir Crispin Tickle, Tim Flannery, James E. Hansen, and James Lovelock. The panel of judges will be assisted in their deliberations by the Climate Group and special adviser to the Virgin Earth Prizes judges, Steve Howard. Richard Branson got involved with football when he sponsored Nuneaton Borough for their January 2006 FA Cup third round game against Middlesbrough. The game ended one all, and the Virgin brand was also on Nuneaton Borough's shirts for the replay, which they eventually lost 2 5. In August 2007, Branson announced that he bought a 20% stake in Malaysia's AirAsia X. On the 13th of October 2007, Branson's Virgin Group sought to add Northern Rock to its empire after submitting an offer that would result in Branson personally owning 30% of the company, changing the company's name from Northern Rock to Virgin Money. The Daily Mail ran a campaign against his bid, and Liberal Democrats financial spokesperson Vince Cable suggested in the House of Commons that Branson's criminal conviction for tax evasion might be felt by some as a good enough reason not to trust him with public money. On the 10th of January 2008, Branson's Virgin Healthcare announced it would open a chain of healthcare clinics that would offer conventional medical care alongside homeopathic and complementary therapies. The Financial Times reported that Ben Bradshaw, UK's health minister, welcomed the launch. He stated, I am pleased that Virgin Healthcare is proposing to work with GPs to help develop more integrated services for patients. Plans where GPs could be paid for referring National Health Service NHS, patients to private Virgin services were abandoned in June 2008. The BMA warned the plan would damage clinical objectivity. There would be a financial incentive for GPs to push patients towards the Virgin services at the centre. Plans to take over an NHS practice in Swindon were subsequently abandoned in late September 2008. In February 2009, Branson's Virgin organization were reported as bidding to buy the former Honda Formula One team. Branson later stated an interest in Formula One, but claimed that, before the Virgin brand became involved with Honda or any other team, Formula One would have to develop a more economically efficient and environmentally responsible image. At the start of the 2009 Formula One season, on the 28th of March, it was announced that Virgin would be sponsoring the new Braun GP team, with discussions also underway about introducing a less dirty fuel in the medium term. After the end of the season, and the subsequent purchase of Braun GP by Mercedes, Branson invested in an 80% buyout of Mana Grand Prix, with the team being renamed to Virgin Racing. Branson and Tony Fernandez, owner of AirAsia and Lotus F1 Racing, had a bet for the 2010 F1 season where the team's boss should work on the winner's airline for a day, dressed as a stewardess. Fernandez escaped as the winner of the bet, as Lotus Racing ended 10th in the championship, while Virgin Racing ended 12th and last. Branson and Somerset County's Natira Resort Development in New Jersey on the Natira Estate opened in late 2009 with the 90 Acres Culinary Center. It includes a restaurant run by chef David Felton, cooking school, wine school, working farm, luxury resort and spa. 
The development, spearheaded by Branson and Bob Wojtowicz, sits on 500 acres, which was the former estate of the King of Morocco. In 2010, Richard Branson became patron of the UK's Gordon Bennett 2010 gas balloon race, which has 16 hydrogen balloons flying across Europe. In April 2010, Branson described the closure of large parts of European airspace owing to volcanic ash as beyond a joke. Scientists later concluded that serious structural damage to aircraft could have occurred if passenger planes had continued to fly. World Record Attempts Richard Branson made several world record-breaking attempts after 1985, when, in the spirit of Blue Riband, he attempted the fastest Atlantic crossing. His first attempt in the Virgin Atlantic Challenger led to the boat capsizing in British waters and a rescue by an RAF helicopter, which received wide media coverage. Some newspapers called for Branson to reimburse the government for the rescue cost. In 1986, in his Virgin Atlantic Challenger 2, with sailing expert Daniel McCarthy, he beat the record by two hours. A year later, his hot air balloon, Virgin Atlantic Flyer, crossed the Atlantic. In January 1991, Branson crossed the Pacific from Japan to Arctic Canada, 6,700 miles, in a balloon of 2.6 million cubic feet. This broke the record with a speed of 245 miles per hour. Between 1995 and 1998, Branson, Per Lindstrad, and Steve Frossett made attempts to circumnavigate the globe by balloon. In 1998, they made a record-breaking flight from Morocco to Hawaii, but were unable to complete a global flight before Bertrand Picard and Brian Jones in Breitling Orbiter 3 in March 1999. In March 2004, Branson set a record by travelling from Dover to Calais in a Gibbs Aquada, in 1 hour 40 minutes and 6 seconds, the fastest crossing of the English Channel in an amphibious vehicle. The previous record of 6 hours was set by two Frenchmen. The cast of Top Gear, Jeremy Clarkson, James May and Richard Hammond, attempted to break this record in an amphibious vehicle which they had constructed, and, while successfully crossing the Channel, they did not break Branson's record. In September 2008, Branson and his children made an unsuccessful attempt at an eastbound record crossing of the Atlantic Ocean under sail in the 99 feet sloop Virgin Money. The boat, also known as Speedboat, is owned by NYYC member Alex Jackson, who was a co-skipper on this passage with Branson and Mike Sanderson. After two days, four hours, winds of force seven to nine, strong gale, and seas of forty feet, twelve meters, a monster wave, destroyed the spinnaker, washed a ten-man life raft overboard, and severely ripped the mainsail. She eventually continued to St. George's, Bermuda. In March 2010, Branson tried for the world record of putting a round of golf in the dark at the Blacklight Mini Golf in the Docklands, Melbourne, Australia. He succeeded in getting 41 on the par 45 course. Television, Film and Print Branson has guest starred, usually playing himself, on several television shows, including Friends, Baywatch, Birds of a Feather, Only Fools and Horses, The Day Today a special episode of Goodness Gracious Me, and Tripping Over. Branson made several appearances during the 90s on the BBC Saturday morning show Live and Kicking, where he was referred to as The Pickle Man by comedy act Trevon Simon, in reference to Branston Pickle. Branson also appears in a cameo early in XTC's General and Majors video. He was also the star of a reality television show on Fox called The Rebel Billionaire, Branson's Quest for the Best, in which 16 contestants were tested for their entrepreneurship and sense of adventure. It did not succeed as a rival show to Donald Trump's The Apprentice, and only lasted one season. His high public profile often leaves him as a figure of satire. The 2000 AD series, Zenith, features a parody of Branson as a supervillain, as the comic's publisher and favoured distributor and the Virgin Group were in competition at the time. He is also caricatured in the Simpsons episode Monty Can't Buy Me Love as the tycoon Arthur Fortune and as the ballooning megalomaniac Richard Chutney, a pun on Branson as in Branston Pickle, in Believe Nothing.
The character grandson Richard, 39, in Terry Pratchett's Wings, is modelled on Branson. He has a cameo appearance in several films, Around the World in 80 Days, 2004, where he played a hot air balloon operator, Superman Returns, where he was credited as shuttle engineer and appeared alongside his son, Sam, with a Virgin Galactic-style, commercial, suborbital shuttle at the centre of his storyline. He also has a cameo in the James Bond film Casino Royale. Here he is seen as a passenger going through Miami Airport security check-in and being frisked. Several Virgin Atlantic planes appear soon after. British Airways edited out Branson's cameo in their in-flight screening of the movie. He makes a number of brief and disjointed appearances in the cult classic comedy Derek and Clive Get the Horn, which follows the exploits of Peter Cook and Dudley Moore, recording their last comedy album. Branson and his mother were also featured in the documentary film Lemonade Stories. In early 2006, on Rove Live, Rove McManus and Sir Richard pushed each other into a swimming pool fully clothed live on TV during a Live at Your House episode. Branson is a Star Trek fan and named his new spaceship VSS Enterprise in honor of the famous Star Trek ships, and in 2006 reportedly offered actor William Shatner a ride on the inaugural space launch of Virgin Galactic. In an interview in Time magazine, the 10th of August 2009, Shatner claimed that Branson approached him, asking how much he would pay for a ride on the spaceship. In response, Shatner asked, how much would you pay me to do it? In 2007, Branson announced on the Colbert Report that he had been named, that he had named a new aircraft Air Colbert. He later doused political satirist and talk show host Stephen Colbert with water from his mug. Branson subsequently took a retaliatory splash from Colbert. The interview quickly ended with both laughing, as shown on the episode aired on Comedy Central on the 27th of August 2007. The interview was promoted on the report as the Colbert Branson interview train wreck. Branson then made a cameo appearance on The Soup, playing an intern working under Joe McHale, who had been warned about getting into water fights with Stephen Colbert and being subsequently fired. In March 2008, he launched Virgin Mobile in India, and, during that period, he even played a cameo in Bollywood film London Dreams. In 2010, Branson narrated Australian sailor Jessica Watson's documentary about her solo sailing trip around the world. It premiered on 1HD on the 16th of August 2010. In April 2011, Branson appeared on CNN's Main Sail with Kate Winslet. Together, they reenacted a famous scene from the 1997 film Titanic for the cameras. On the 17th of August 2011, he was featured in the premiere episode of Hulu's first long-form original production entitled A Day in the Life. Activism Humanitarian Initiatives In the late 1990s, Branson and musician Peter Gabriel discussed with Nelson Mandela their idea of a small, dedicated group of leaders working objectively and without any vested personal interest to solve difficult global conflicts. On the 18th of July 2007, in Johannesburg, South Africa, Nelson Mandela announced the formation of a new group, the Elders, in a speech he delivered on the occasion of his 89th birthday. The founding members of his group are Desmond Tutu, Graca McCall, Kofi Annan, Ella Bart, Gro Harlem Brunsland, Jimmy Carter, Lee Zhaoxing, Mary Robinson, and Mohamed Yaras. The Elders is independently funded by a group of founders, including Branson and Gabriel. Desmond Tutu serves as the chair of the Elders, who will use their collective skills to catalyze peaceful resolutions to long-standing conflicts, articulate new approaches to global issues that are causing or may cause immense human suffering, and share wisdom by helping to connect voices all over the world. They will be working together to carefully consider which specific issues they will approach. Branson's other work in South Africa includes the Branson School of Entrepreneurship, set up in 2005 as a partnership between Virgin Unite, the non-profit foundation of Virgin, and entrepreneur Taddy Bletcher, the founder of CIDA City Campus, a university in Johannesburg.
The school aims to improve economic growth in South Africa by supporting startups and micro-enterprises with skills, mentors, services, networks, and financial arrangements. Fundraising activity to support the school is notably achieved by the Sunday Times Fast Track 100, sponsored by Virgin Group at its yearly event, where places to join Richard Branson on trips to South Africa to provide coaching and mentoring to students are auctioned to attendees. In 2009, Jason Luckhurst and Boyd Kershaw of Practicus, Martin Ainscoff of the Ainscoff Group, and Matthew Riley of Daisy Communications helped raise £150,000 through the auction. In September 2007, Richard Branson chaired the jury of the first Picnic Green Challenge, a €500,000 award for Best New Green Initiative, set up by the Dutch Postcode Lotterge, Postcode Lottery, and the Picnic Network of Creative Professionals. The first Green Challenge was won by Current with the Cubox. Branson was the first celebrity guest for the popular charity fundraisers Reserve Dinners, raising over £75,000 in one evening towards his Virgin Unite charity. In March 2008, Richard Branson hosted an environmental gathering at his private island, Necker Island, in the Caribbean, with several prominent entrepreneurs, celebrities and world leaders. They discussed global warming-related problems facing the world, hoping that this meeting will be a precursor to many more future discussions regarding similar problems. Former British Prime Minister Tony Blair, Wikipedia co-founder Jimmy Wales, and Larry Page of Google were in attendance. Branson has been very supportive of Kenya during its troubles, and in May 2008 had gone to Masi Mara to open a new school. On the 8th of May 2009, Branson took over Maya Farrow's hunger strike in protest of the Sudanese government's expulsion of aid groups from the Darfur region. He concluded his scheduled three-day fast on the 11th of May. Later that year, he joined the project Soldiers of Peace, a movie against all wars and for global peace. Richard Branson is a signatory of the campaign Global Zero, a non-profit international initiative for the elimination of all nuclear weapons worldwide. Since its launch in Paris in December 2008, Global Zero has grown to 300 leaders, including current and former heads of state, national security officials and military commanders, and 400,000 citizens worldwide. It has also developed a practical step-by-step -step plan to eliminate nuclear weapons, launched an international student campaign with 75 campus chapters in eight countries, and produced an acclaimed documentary film, Countdown to Zero, in partnership with Lawrence Bender and Participant Media. Since 2010, Branson has served as a commissioner on the Broadband Commission for Digital Development, a UN initiative which promotes universal access to broadband services. In 2011, Branson served on the Global Commission of Drug Policy with former political and cultural leaders of Latin America and elsewhere, in a bid to boost the effort to achieve more humane and rational drug laws. Politics In the 1980s, he was briefly given the post of Litter Tsar by Margaret Thatcher, charged with keeping Britain tidy. He was again seen as close to the government when the Labour Party came to power in 1997. In 2005, he declared that there were only negligible differences between the two major parties on economic matters. He has frequently been mentioned as a candidate for Mayor of London, and Paul suggested he would be a viable candidate, though he has yet to express interest. Business Practices Branson's business empire is owned by a complicated series of offshore trusts and companies, the Sunday Times stated his wealth is calculated at £3.065 billion. If he were to retire to his Caribbean island and liquidate all of this, he would pay relatively little in tax. Honours and Awards In 1993, Branson was awarded an honorary degree of Doctor of Technology from Loughborough University. In the New Year's Honours list, Dated the 30th of December 1999, Her Majesty the Queen signified her intention to confer the honour of Knight Bachelor on him for his services to entrepreneurship. He was knighted by His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales on the 30th of March 2000 at an investiture at Buckingham Palace.
Also in 2000, Branson received the Tony Janus Award for his accomplishments in commercial air transportation. Branson is the patron of several charities, including the International Rescue Corps and Prisoners Abroad, a registered charity which supports Britons who are detained outside of the UK. Branson appears at number 85 on the 2002 list of 100 Greatest Britons, sponsored by the BBC and voted for by the public. Branson was also ranked in 2007's Time magazine Top 100 Most Influential People in the World. In 2009, Branson was voted as the UK's celebrity dream boss in an opinion poll by Cancer Research UK. On the 7th of December 2007, United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki moon presented Branson with the United Nations Correspondents Association Citizen of the World Award for his support for environmental and humanitarian causes. On the 24th of January 2011, Branson was awarded the German Media Prize, organized by Media Control Charts, previously handed to former US President Bill Clinton and the Dalai Lama. On the 14th of November 2011, Branson was awarded the ISTA Prize by the International Space Transport Association in The Hague for his pioneering achievements in the development of suborbital transport systems with Virgin Galactic. On the 11th of February 2012, Branson was honoured with the National Academy of Recording Arts and Sciences President's Merit Award for his contributions to the music industry. The event took place the night before the 54th Grammy Awards. Personal Life He stated in an interview with Piers Morgan that he and his wife Joan had a daughter named Claire Sarah who died when she was just four days old in 1979. The couple wed at their daughter Holly's suggestion when she was eight years old in 1989 at Necker Island, a 74-acre, 30-hectare island in the British Virgin Islands that Branson owns. He also owns land on the Caribbean islands of Antigua and Barbuda. Holly Branson is now a doctor and is a keen supporter of the football team Oxford United. In 1998, Branson released his autobiography, titled Losing My Virginity, an international bestseller. Branson was deeply saddened by the disappearance of fellow adventurer Steve Fawcett in September 2007, and the following month he wrote an article for Time magazine titled My Friend, Steve Forrest. Influences Branson has stated in a number of interviews that he derives much influence from non-fiction books. He most commonly names Nelson Mandela's autobiography, Long Walk to Freedom, explaining that Mandela is one of the most inspiring men I have ever met and had the honour to call my friend. Owing to his interest in humanitarian and ecological issues, Branson also lists Al Gore's best-selling book An Inconvenient Truth and The Revenge of Gaia by James Lovelock among his favourites. According to Branson's own book, Screw It, Let's Do It! Lessons in Life, he is also a huge fan of the works by Zhang Chang.